Welcome to LTU Game Day. As you guys can see, the sun is shining. We have a beautiful morning for college football. Uh, we are brought to you by the inaugural homecoming football game at Lawrence Technological University. Uh, my name is Jay Redman, and I'll be your host today. Next to me, we have the football sports information director, Jonathan Hevron, the LTU sports report producer, Gabe O'Neill, and last but not least, the creative service specialist, Derek Blaylock. It's, home, it's homecoming week, and it's been exciting on campus. As you can see, all of our students are out this morning. Yeah. It's been a great, great week, exciting week on campus for our community. We had our Powder Puff football game, our staff and student football game on Thursday night. Last night, we kicked off the basketball season with our women's and men's basketball uh, midnight madness. And but the most important one was Wednesday night, our soccer team got a big 3-0 victory over Rochester College. And Gabe, they seem to be off to a good start this year. Yeah, the men's uh, soccer team is going off right now. Honestly, you know, they started the WAC 0-1 against Madonna, but since then they have been on a five-game winning streak, taking out every opponent by over two goals, I believe. They've put up 18 points in their past five games. They have had five straight shutouts now. Goalkeeper Max Jewett is an absolute tyrant in net, and he is just really running the back line for the entire team. So good things coming from them, Jay. Sounds good, man. And uh, like you said, it's been a great season for volleyball this fall as well. But really, we're here with football today as well. And like I said, it's been a great start to the season. Currently 5-0, and and today we're going on to uh, the football recap for the Blue Devils for John and Gabe. <laughs> Take it away, Thank John. You, you know, you know uh, Gabe, you mentioned the fact that the soccer team has been very stingy in the goal department, giving up, uh, they've been, what was it, about three hours of shutout soccer? Three so hours far. of shutout soccer, yeah, absolutely. You know, coincidentally, the football team, about three hours of shutout football for them, ruined last week in the fourth quarter against Trinity Bible. They won 68-7, to though. They off to a 5-0 and start. I don't think anyone expected this coming into the season, but today, big test with Indiana Wesleyan, coming in 4-1 and with a mostly conference schedule, a little bit different approach than what we had in the scheduling. But, uh, you know, so far, 55 points per game, but what really stands out to me, Gabe, it's not all by the offense. No, no, it definitely is not all about the offense. The defense was holding their own, more than holding their own, especially with the special teams involved. They're outscoring their opponents, I believe, 30, 48 to 36? 42 36. 42 yeah. 36, 42, 36, excuse me. But on all sides of the ball, you know, they're getting fumbles for touchdowns, interceptions, pick sixes. They're doing it all on both sides of the ball and on special teams as well. You know, and then looking at the offense, you do have Tyler Kalkar, starting quarterback. Redshirt freshman coming in. He had a two-year mission trip, but right now, 12 touchdowns, zero interceptions. Big stat line for him. The Blue Devils are taking care of the football with a plus-six turnover margin. You're going to win a lot of football games like that. You know, after talking to Coach Duvendeck, you know, throughout the season, he has said that Tyler is definitely their main leader of the team. He is the most, he's the oldest on the team. I believe he's 21 years of age. Most of these other younger guys are, you know, 18, 19 years old, and he is just really holding it down for them. They look up to him, and he has been just improving every game and really just absolutely lights out in the air. Absolutely. We're coming into this. This is our, our sixth game of the season. Third game at home so far. We had Oakland, over 4,000 people there. We had 2,800 against Pittsburgh. And now we're looking for about 3,000 plus today with a capacity of 2,000. Great home crowd, as you can see behind us. Yeah, yeah. let's hear it. Yeah. We're, here. we're excited for a great homecoming to match up with Indiana Wesleyan. So, good, Jay. And at this point, like I said, each of our panelists, we'd like to have an individual topic for them to discuss for each of you. We'll start at the end with Derek Blaylock. So uh, we got my topic of the day. We got MSU going against Penn State, guys. Big game in big Hatton game, Valley. Big game. And no one's giving Michigan State a chance, but I'm going to tell you guys a little secret here. <laughs> Michigan State is going to win today on a controversial late call heading into Michigan week. And then it is off to the races there, guys. Very optimistic there, Derek. For, <laughs> for my grab bag of the day, I'm going with Notre Dame, two national championship over Alabama. Let's go Irish. On a hot streak right now. That's all I got to say. You know, the change in quarterback, Ian Book, potential Heisman candidate. But I know you got a Heisman candidate yourself there, John. I do have a Heisman candidate myself. So I got two grab bags today. I'm going to start oh, off oh. since you transitioned so well into it. <laughs> Will Greer for Heisman. West Virginia Mountaineers undefeated in the Big 12. Big matchup November 3rd against Texas. Who I heard a rumor Texas football is back. I don't believe it. I don't know. Texas is back. I don't know about that. See that Oklahoma game? I saw the Oklahoma oh. game. I, I'm just saying they haven't played West Virginia yet. But with that, you know, the Mountaineers, I think a Big 12 champion will trump 
an undefeated champ out of the Big Ten. I think you're looking at a playoff picture of Georgia, Bama, maybe Notre Dame. That strength of schedule is Come concerning. Come on, give it to me. Give it to me. And give then me some West confidence. Virginia. <laughs> My second grab bag, though, I'm looking at the Legion of Doom, the defensive line under the direction of Mike Davis here at Lawrence Tech. They have been just a force, an absolute brick wall, giving up 24.2 yards per game on the ground. They haven't surrendered a rushing touchdown yet all season. Tommy Lappin anchoring, or excuse me, Tommy Larson anchoring that line. Five and a half sacks, eight tackles for loss. Tommy Lappin, though, on the linebacker court, is leading the team with eight and a half tackles for loss. They've been impressive. Three safeties so far this year for that defensive line. It's been quite an impressive season so far. I just love how we're in Michigan, and <laughs> all three of you guys forgot about the game in Ann Arbor this week. In Ann Arbor, oh, we, the Michigan we have, we have Wolverines are we playing the Wisconsin We have Badgers. to go to Ann Arbor to cover that game <laughs> after this. Yeah. <laughs> so as you guys are aware, that's my pick of game of the week. And most importantly, that's going to solidify their spot into the college playoffs at the end of the year as they end up beating um, yeah, Ohio State. Next week. But more importantly, we have the main event, and that is the game here in Southfield, Michigan, yeah! with the matchup with Indiana Wesleyan and Lawrence Technological University. So at this point, I'd love to transition back to John <laughs> as he talks a little bit more about the matchup for today's game with Lawrence Tech and Indiana Wesleyan. Definitely the main event. It's our first homecoming game on campus here in Southfield. It's our first homecoming game in 72 years. So right away, heck of a matchup. Both of us, Indiana Wesleyan and Lawrence Tech, will be competing in the Mid-States Football Association starting next year. Both, for, both our first year programs. But you look at this matchup on paper, you know, it's it's a cool either way. It's 50-50, great rush attack for Indiana Wesleyan, but Gabe, sneaky pass attack so far. Sneaky pass attack, definitely. Indiana Wesleyan proves to be a great, excuse me, great opponent for our LTU Blue Devils. Their defense isn't maybe as strong as ours, but their offense is definitely going to give our defense a good look this week. And then headed into Northern Michigan, one of our other tougher opponents. So it's going to be a good look. But I, you know, I gotta say, I think with the home crowd here today, maybe reaching a 4,000 capacity, yeah! I don't know, could happen. It's, it's, I don't think the Wildcats will be able to handle it. You no, know, it's definitely gonna be a great, great advantage for us being here at home. Zach Blair, though, looking at that that passing attack for Indiana Wesleyan, competing, completing 60% of his passes, eight touchdowns, and uh, so far it's been Braden Smith, his primary target. Four of those eight touchdowns have gone to him. We know the strength of our defense is that secondary. It's gonna be a great test for those guys here today. Yeah, our secondary is led by. Cam Mitchell, who had another pick six, a big hit for a forced fumble last week. The guy is just a monster the in the secondary. Some other names to mention, Justin Knott. Uh, Jalen Smith. <laughs> Jalen yeah. Smith, excuse me. Mike Walrich. It's uh, very deep in the defensive secondary. It's going to be, as I said, it's going to be a very good matchup. We're looking forward to that. We've been doing a great job, as I mentioned earlier, the Legion of Doom from my grab bag. They've been getting pressure on the quarterback, forcing those bad throws, allowing our defensive backs to make a play on the ball. No doubt, no doubt. And... We're going to transition now to our staff picks for the games of the week. We're going to bring on Jamie the Goose Vassal, director of fun here at Lawrence Tech, our good friend. We're going to bring her on, do a few games. <laughs> Give Jamie some love. All right, our first game of the week, we're going to keep it in the NAI. Excuse me. Sienna Heights from Adrian, Michigan, against St. Francis, who is 4-2. John, just start it off for us right now. Well, we got number 20 versus number 13 in this matchup. The interesting part of this, Sienna Heights undefeated right now, having a heck of a season, but St. Francis are back-to-back -back national championships. They've lost their last two games, so it's going to be it's at home. I'm expecting St. Francis to rebound, especially in a ranked opponent in national stage. I think St. Francis takes this game. I'm going to have to go with Sienna Heights to disagree with you. I, I apologize, but we got a few, uh, few of the Sienna Heights alumni and uh, one of their previous coaches, Q Coach Dan McEwen, our defensive coordinator, was a coach at Siena Heights and Coach Yellowshawn, one of our linebacker coaches, yep. was a player there. So I'm going to give them some love and pick their alma mater. I got to go back to back national champions, St. Francis. They're not going to lose three in a row. Jamie, what do you got? I'm going to agree with Gabe. I got to go with Siena Heights on this one. Jay? I'm going to go with Sienna Heights, <laughs> staying in Michigan. All right, so Gabe and I are 1-0 already, so that's a good start yeah. for us. <laughs> All right, moving right along, we have got Marion versus Taylor, another, you know, two teams that our LTU Blue Devils are going to be seeing up in the next year. John, you want to kick this one off and let us know what you think? Marion, uh, they had the first defeat over St. Francis. It was a big upset. They are now up to number two in the country, undefeated. They're playing Taylor, who has 2-3 and three overall, 0-1 in conference, but they had a big win to start the season off against the team we're seeing here today, Indiana Wesleyan and Marion. I think this is a trap game for Marion. I think they got to be careful with Taylor. Taylor can put up points. We've seen it all season. I'm taking Taylor in the upset. 
I'm going to agree with you there on this one. I don't know much about either team, to be honest with you, but I know that Marion's a strong team. You know, they're ranked number two, like you said, I believe, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm just going to go based off schedule strength, and uh, Marion's going to pull this one out. Absolutely. Marion <laughs> stays undefeated, 6-0. and no. Jamie, what do you got? Uh, I think Taylor with the upset. I think they have a whole special place in my heart. I'm going to go with Taylor with the upset. Okay. And just, just to be an odd pick, like you said, <laughs> I'm going to go with Jamie as well. We're picking Taylor for the upset today. All right, and getting into some bigger games in the NCAA, we have got Michigan versus Wisconsin. Jam, I'm going to let you take this we both one. No, everyone here knows that the Michigan Wolverines are winning that game today. The defense is going to take over. No, Shea sir. Patterson is going to throw up 300 <laughs> yards, a couple touchdowns. He's going to be the difference maker today. Jonathan Taylor is going to lead that game to victory for the Wisconsin Badgers, by the way. <laughs> Just FYI. All right, so we know Derek's pick there. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at this matchup and the fact that we're in Ann Arbor. You know, I don't have too much uh, stock in Shea Patterson. He's been a little inconsistent for my liking. But what I'm looking at is Kayvon Higdon's brother, Karan Higdon, leading the rushing attack for the Wolverines. Shout out. I'm going to take Michigan in this matchup. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the Wolverines, too. Uh, not a huge U of M fan. Also not a huge Badger fan. So <laughs> I'm going to stay in the state and keep it uh, with U of M. Yeah, I'm going Badgers <laughs> for sure. No argument there. <laughs> All right, and then uh, to our last game. Oh, no, sorry. Last game that not all to you. We're going with Michigan State and Penn State. Derek, I know you want to talk about this. You've been craving about it all week. Go ahead. You know, no one, like I said earlier, is giving Michigan State a chance. In Happy Valley, 100 plus thousand, and it's going to be tough. But I think our passing game is going to take care of it. Hopefully, our play calling is going to be good. And Michigan State, with the upset, to get back on the national stage before we beat Michigan on our home field next week. I'm going to go green on this one because I think Michigan State can pull up the upset. They did it last year. People tend to forget that we uh, beat Penn State last year as well. As long as we can control our penalties in this game, I think Michigan State can uh, hold their own this year. It's a good point there, Jamie. They did win last year. But it's this <laughs> year, and I'm going with the Nittany Lions. Penn State is looking strong this year. Uh, Trace McSorley, I love the way he plays, and uh, I'm going to go with Penn State. You know, Jamie, it's an interesting point. You bring up the penalties, which, you know, tying it back to Lawrence, like it's been an Achilles heel all season. We've seen how that yeah, can be a hurdle that you're going to have to get over. I'm not sure if Michigan State can, even as even as a former Spartan. I'm looking at this matchup, and as Gabe said, Trace McSorley, I love how he can run, throw on the run, get out of the pocket, keep plays alive elusive. with that. He's very elusive, <laughs> and to be honest with you, Similar to Michigan, I'm not sure if Michigan State's defense can handle a running quarterback. Even without Saquon Barkley there right now in Penn State, it's in Happy Valley. It's going to be a whiteout. I'm going to take the Nittany Lions in this matchup. And Derek, like you said, nobody's giving Michigan State a chance. I'm not giving one either. <laughs> Penn State. <laughs> All right, and finally, LTU versus Indiana Wesleyan. Yeah! What everyone wants to hear about. We're going to let John... You take this one, go right ahead. You know, all week I've been feeling a lot of questions of what I think about this game, and as I said earlier, this could go either way. On paper, you look at this rushing attack for Indiana Wesleyan, you know, they got a couple backs, both over 400 yards, both with multiple touchdowns. But that strength of Lawrence Tech is the defense, and it is the rush defense. So I'm looking at this saying defense wins championships, defense is going to come out in the end. I think we're going to see a heck of a game here today. Definitely not a blowout, but I'm going to take Lawrence Tech in the slim victory. Yeah! That's a great pick. <laughs> I'm also going to take Lawrence Tech, but not for the defensive aspect of it because our own rushing attack, a three-headed monster, we got Mikhail Terra, Tanner Foley, and Ahmad Sabah all have over 100-plus rushing yards in the game this year. Some have over 300 yards in the season, and all three are getting touches, multiple touchdowns. These guys are monsters. Coach Belfi is let him have it every day of practice. We mic'd up him a couple weeks ago, and you can just tell that he's got his guys ready to run through a wall against this uh, Indiana Wesleyan team. I gotta go Lawrence Tech. I gotta go Lawrence Tech for sure. Go with home team. It's homecoming. Homecoming, guys! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> and you guys, Indiana Wesleyan, in the same boat, first season of football, just like Lawrence Tech, and they're gonna be hungry. Coming into another team's uh, field, and I, they're I gonna like put up a big starting. test, big test. But it's Lauren Tax Day, so we're rolling. Let's see, it, let's see, baby! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay, what do you think? And like you said, I mean, it is homecoming. The crowd's been great the first two games. I think we're gonna have the home field advantage. Like you said, we're getting a couple thousand fans out. But unlike what they said, I think it's going to be our passing attack today. I think that's what's going to be the difference maker. LTU is winning this matchup versus Indiana Wesleyan for homecoming to take themselves to 6-0. You 
You know, Derek, I think you jumped the gun a little bit on putting the headgear on. Uh, we forgot did. to welcome in our celebrity student picker of the day. We have a uh, member of Phi Tau Beta with us here, <laughs> Candace, to select the LTU versus Indiana Wesleyan matchup. Candace, what are your thoughts on today's game? Um, I got to say LTU. I might be a little bit biased, but uh, <laughs> it's homecoming week. It's homecoming day. It's the game, and I think they're going to win. They're going to bring it all the way through. Our boys are going to do great. There All right. Well, she's, got the, she's got the horns on today. So. She's got the horns on. Yeah. <laughs> Ready to go fired up. Thank you, Candace. <laughs> well, that's it all. That's all for us. The Blue Devils take on Indiana Wesley at noon. Be there. We know what, ladies and gentlemen, it's a blue out. So wear blue, and Make we'll sure see you, you later. Blue. Let's go. Thank you. Hey. Thank you.